Hello and welcome. I'm just here yes. testing my mic because for a second it wasn't there, but it is here. And now, welcome to the Latinx and Games Media panel. We are talking about being from freelance to full time. And I'm joined with my other colleagues at IGN. We're going to go down the line and talk about who we are, what we do, what our handle is. And then we're going to kick off these island tours and tours of our career trajectories. So I am Jan Garcia. Here I am in my little hat. Got my pleased emote. I am the associate editor for guides at IGN. And my handle is Game Onesis. I'm going to go ahead and put that handle on screen by painstakingly typing it in because this is how Nintendo uses its communication features. But I am Game Onesis on all socials, uh, on Twitch, on YouTube, on basically everything. So that'll be there for y'all to follow along. And then we're gonna jump to uh, who else we have on here. Uh, that's me, I'm Felicia, and you can find me at Felicia Vagabond. I'll drop that in the stream in a second. But I'm the SEO editor at IGN. Yay! Yay! <laughs> and then while Felicia's typing that up, I'll go ahead and say hello! I'm Marina Sanchez, I'm the executive editor of Guides at IGN, and uh, I'm very excited to be here and to celebrate our heritage. And then you can follow me at Havoc Rose, and thankfully mine is actually short, so I can type in quickly. <laughs> Are you using the touch screen? Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> cool. You can also have a video chat, by the way. Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Armando. Uh, I am the syndication and digital strategist at IGN. And you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram right here uh, at underscore Mando Torres. Uh, welcome. We're really excited to be here. And yeah, let's get this started. All right. So I'm going to kick things off. This is my island. Uh, I put Godzilla here because I didn't know where else to put it. And we're going to start with the jankiest part and work to the nicer parts because I think that's kind of how my career also went. Very messy and haphazard in the beginning, but then it kind of picked up. So I have my spooky um, DIY graveyard where these are the DIYs I'm not using. And then I also just have like a pile of uh, garbage that I left because I need to empty my pockets. We got my fishing area. I think everyone can relate to that. Um, very real problem in Animal Crossing. No one take my DIY bottle. Uh, and then I, I have know, my considering it, no <laughs> it. Right, right. I mean, it's not, if it doesn't show up on stream, how will I know? Uh, we got my uh, swimming area where you can like come up here and dive. So I kind of just built this little thing. Oh, it's so cute. Thanks. Thanks. I hate how the um, the suits aren't like proper clothes to have that you can't just like put it on a wand or something. Uh, they're kind of like this weird in between. Uh, we cut back this way. Uh, this is how I have my villager like houses set up. It's very like simplistic and just sort of a line. It's a little suburban, honestly, and I kind of want to change it and make it more interesting. <laughs> and then um, we have my house here. And honestly, if I could go back, I probably would have changed this because I feel like it's a little elitist to just live on this yeah. hill. <laughs> You're lording over <laughs> Looking your above everyone sure. else. Um, yeah. And then if we cut over this way, we can go to my campsite. Everything is like, uh, you can traverse it without any extra tools. Oh, um, I love that. I love yeah, accessibility. Yeah, Hell yeah. Number is so great. It's like they're in this gorgeous hiding out. That's and then uh, we can just uh, sit here for a second while I talk about, I guess, the first elements of my story in games media. So essentially, I've always loved games. I've been playing games since like, I don't know, 98 when I was like four or five years old. Yes, that means I am young. Don't do the math. Um, and uh, yeah, I've always loved games, but more importantly, I've always loved writing. I've been doing like some level of writing since I was like in seventh grade with doing poetry. I did competitive slam poetry for a total of eight years, my whole high school career, my whole college career. Um, so that was a, a big part of my life. And when I went to college, I, I was still writing. Like I just always loved writing. I did blogs about like my college experience and my life. Um, yes, that is my fireplace <laughs> and um, all this different stuff. I'm cooking, so cooking. yeah, hell yeah, that's what it's there for. It's like my little my little area, my little cooking area. Um, yeah, so I've just always been into writing and essentially I thought, hey, what if I wrote about games? Like what if I did some posts about video games? And then that evolved into, oh, Rice Crispy just donated $50 via Tiltify.
is fine on my end. Oh! Oh, yay! Yeah, we we're here and we're, we're back. back. Oh my I'm God. not sure at what point we got cut off, but we're here in my pumpkin patch. I'm just sitting here on a log as one does. Um, I planted a lot of pumpkins because I just felt like you needed a lot and I didn't want to not have enough. Um, it's the classic doing more than you need to to get the results you want, which I think is part of the whole getting into this industry narrative, honestly. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to go back out and cut through. Uh, we'll find a place to sit and then I'll talk about kind of that latter half of once I decided I wanted to do this as a career, what that kind of setup looked like. Um, here is my museum. I tried to make it spooky by putting the, the anatomy like thing there. Um, and I got these little signs that someone else made of like the fossils and the art. I appreciate the reactions, thank you. <laughs> um, we'll go to, I guess, you know, since it's like uh, the Latinx Heritage Month thing, I think sitting here would be good. This is like my, we'll look at this area more closely, but this is like my Mexican themed, like Mercado. outdoor. Yeah, it's I like a it. restaurant so slash like, uh, I think there was a, an ice cream place like a little bit near there. I still have the same oven. I use the same stuff everywhere. But essentially when I decided to, um, get into games media as a career, I started looking for paid opportunities because I knew I wanted to do this as a job. So I got writing at like small sites like Nerd Much. Um, I kind of kept going about my life with graduating college and uh, trying my hand at teaching. I originally planned to teach and do games media on the side, but then I realized that wasn't really gonna work because it was just like way too much effort to put all my energy towards all these things. Also, Ray Jimenez just donated $10 via Tiltify. Thank you for the donation. That is awesome. Um, so essentially I went ahead and kept working and then I realized, okay, I, if I'm gonna do this completely, I need to stop teaching because I just felt like I couldn't give all my energy to my students the way they needed it and to my side career the way it needed it. So I kind of had to pick one and I picked writing because that's what I loved more than teaching. Um, once I made that leap, I was full-time freelance. Uh, I started full-time freelance not having much money at all. I had like maybe $100 on Patreon. I had like one side gig that was like 25 an article, like pretty low numbers, you know. Um, I got lucky and right before I, um, like my job ended, I got hired to do news at PSLS for 500 a month. Once again, these are very low underpaid rates, but it was enough to at least kind of pay the rent and get me started on doing things. Um, and that's kind of like that second tier. And then uh, I'll show you guys a little bit more of the island and end talking about uh, how I got to IGN specifically. Uh, you guys can have this DIY that's on the floor because I just dropped it at one point. It's my ice cream place. Um, but we have Able Sisters. And I want to make this also kind of having that like Latino theme. So I have like the Chica Poblana dress and like I added a custom oh, cool. DIY to the little, what is that called? A loom, right? Yeah, the yeah. thing's a loom. Oh, and this is one of my favorite places. This is my like quinceanera dress shop that I have. <laughs> oh my God. Um, <laughs> I'm the Chambelan. What's yeah, up? like I tried to put all these different like cute little outfits. I actually didn't have a quinceanera when I was younger and I kind of like regret not like pushing to have one because I think it's just like such a fun like exciting rite of passage and like celebration of like getting older and like you know like going into womanhood which is weird because it happens when you're like 15 but like that's a different <laughs> conversation but I think the the celebrations the dances are like super fun um they were pretty fun yeah yeah I I, I my parents took every opportunity they could to throw me into quinceaneras of like their friends kids yeah. stuff, so I had my fill they were fun I, but <laughs> Yeah, I only got to be in one, I didn't have my own, but I got to be in a court for one, and it was definitely an experience I cherish, just because it was very nice to be part of that. Yeah, I think the, um, my favorite just looking at the dances, like, this is my cafe, like, the surprise dances are super fun, and, like, they always have, like, their own twist to them. Um, we can just sit out here for my, my last section, and this is basically, like, pretty much my whole island. We'll cut through my, my botanical, uh, or my zen garden on my way out, um, for us going to the next island, but... For getting to IGN specifically, I was freelancing a bunch and then I was just talking to people that worked at IGN once they kind of got to know me and my work and I was like, hey, I'd love to freelance for IGN. How can we make this happen? And um, I think I talked to Casey, was one of the early people I talked to on the guides team. And she's like, well, Sam could use more people on wikis, which makes sense now that I'm on wikis where we're like, we always need more guides writers. So 
I said yes just because it was IGN. Like, I was like, oh, totally. But I'd never, like, done a full walkthrough guide before. Um, honestly, I found it intimidating and potentially boring, like, the thought of doing a guide. But once I did it, I, I just kind of fell in love with it. I kept doing it. I kept getting more work from there. And uh, eventually, when a position opened up, I applied. And I got it. And that's basically um, a very abridged version of, of everything I did to get where I am today. Uh, as we walk out and I kind of end my island tour, we'll cut through my garden as I end these last kind of thoughts. Um, other things I did that are worth noting, podcasts, YouTube stuff. Um, I'm finally getting back into that as someone that now works at IGN. The frame rate really dips once you add all these items. <laughs> um, this is my little Zen garden. I love this little area. It's so cute and, and, and chill. And these, these freaking bushes are finally in season. So I'm excited about that, but that's pretty much my entire time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and boot everyone off so we can set up another Dodo code and check out um, our next island. So cool. I'm just going to make everyone just appear into the, disappear into the ether. Uh, All right, I think we'll it's see just end Alicia's. session. Yeah. 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 Just end session. And then I think we... Everyone just kind of magically dissipates. Yep. Um, so I yeah. So yeah, that's really cool. So, uh, Janet, I guess um, maybe for those who aren't aware, what's like your day to day as a guides writer? Like, what is being a guides writer? What do you do? Yeah, like it's. Yeah. Um, I think the day to day it depends on where we are in our projects. So if we're if I'm already working specifically on a guide, then I am working on doing whatever pages I need to do for the guide. So maybe I'm just writing walkthrough pages. Maybe I'm checking trends and seeing what pages need to be created. Um, maybe it's before the guy, the game is even out and I'm anticipating, okay, I have the walkthrough, but also what do I think players will be looking up? Or also what do I think players could find value in? So sometimes I do just make stuff because um, I think it would be cool to have. And like sometimes those end up being popular, sometimes they don't, but I'm like, I think this is cool to make and I want to make it and I think it's a good idea. And like, I just make the, make the thing happen. That's kind of what I did with a lot of Animal Crossing content. Like mm -hmm. we have this huge... Um, custom DIYs, like, designs page that I thought would be fun because I, I wanted that for myself as a player. And people liked it. People were really into it. Um, so stuff like that goes down. I talk to freelancers about their projects and kind of give them feedback on their work as well and guide them on what they should be doing. Um, and then other stuff just kind of comes at random as it's needed. So sometimes I'll jump into stream. Sometimes I'll work on, you know, occasionally doing a news story if it's needed. I'll do our news games and more live show. You know, those kind of things are like on the side of my main task. But um, yeah, I would say that's kind of my day to day. So depend it kind of depends on where I am in my projects, whether or not I'm doing an intensive gameplay day, a, a huge writing day, if I'm doing a script for a video, if I'm like collabing with like other team members. Um, but it's usually just thinking about whatever game I'm working on and addressing whatever needs to be addressed. So like if I'm still doing Animal Crossing, like I, my day might be getting all the spooky DIYs and taking screenshots and making slideshows with them. It just kind of depends on where I am in a project. Cool. Hey, Janet, uh, Felicia just dropped her Dodo code if you want to um, go ahead over there first. Sure. This is one of the uh, most difficult things, definitely. About I know. I it. It's oh the most time needed, too. Oh, Zach Ryan from IGN just donated $50 via Tiltify. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. Appreciate that so, also, so much. We, we missed a donation from Hyrule Shieldman, so thank you, Hyrule Shieldman, for that donation as well. And thank just you, a reminder Hyrule that Man. you guys can um, donate to Gameheads and Panthera when both the Tiltify link, which you can find on Twitch. So please absolutely do that. Yeah. Stream Mom's just giving us a little reminder, too, so please donate if you can. Also, oh, yeah, sorry. Fancy the island name. The Slack and yeah. notifications every now and then. All right, who wants to go after Janet? Miranda, I'll you can go. go. Yeah. yeah. I guess it's just you and me then, huh? Yeah. But yeah, I'll cool. fight for it. <laughs> Gosh. Here I go, hey. finally flying in. Yeah, waiting yeah, at the I, airport I, immediately after helps, like, with some of the time. Like, queuing up the questions from... God, what is the name of this bird? Um. Uh, <laughs> I forgot. Uh, Oliver? Wilbur? Wilbur? Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah it's Wilbur. Old if anyone old. watching knows the name of that dodo offhand, please let us know. I feel bad because I just skip through all their dialogue all the time. Yeah. I Seriously. I, I Half the time, I don't even read my villagers. Um, Yo. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, same though. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
Oh, we get a spoilers at Alicia's island. Yes. Yo, someone said Gulliver. <laughs> it's not Gulliver. <laughs> Gulliver's the seagull. Who gets yeah. I, I like how it's like, oh, that's that. that's totally different. <laughs> um, Orville says Penguin's creative. Oh, that sounds right. Orville? It does sound right. It's an O name for sure. I, I couldn't say. It's kind of silly because it's like I'm talking to him right now. Yeah, it's Orville. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, Connor, Horrible. thank you for the $10 wow. donation via Tiltify. That's what's up. Thanks, Connor. Thank you. Also, thanks, Penguins Creative, for uh, letting us know that that bird's name is Orville. Yeah. All right, Miranda, are you going up? Yep, I'm ready, getting ready to depart. Sweet. This is the fun part, right? Yeah. Oh, that's me. I'm on my way. Cool. Let me or know when you're flying. Over. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, I guess I could look at the screen here. Um... Yeah, no, I'll let you know when I'm done. Cool. Um... But yeah, I know we're also we're not, we're not short on time at all. It's not so like, wow, we're going. Oh, we just got another another donation. Yay, Yay Obi Boing. Thank you. Thank also, you. Obi Boing's island is incredible. Like, like seriously, the stuff of like Animal Crossing dreams. Wow. Also, we have a fun fact from Havoc Gyrus. That's actually my twin sister. Shout out to my twin. Uh, she says the, the names of like the Wright brothers. Oh. oh, that's what that I like. Makes... Kind of vaguely remembered, but then sadly, the first thing I thought of with Orville was Orville Redenbacher, and I'm like, Me that's too. not right. Yeah, uh, like, Levester just brothers, donated but... via Tiltify as well. I think it was twenty dollars. It kind of splashed on screen rather quickly, but thank you so much for that donation. Thank you. I didn't know that. That's so cute, actually. Orville. Orville. All right, I'm in. <laughs> cool. All right, I'm heading over now. Do do do. It's always funny just like watching the little loading screen. Yeah, popcorn. Man, I could go for some popcorn right now. <laughs> Felicia, uh, while I fly over, I think you could, you know, maybe oh. start going over like what you do at IGN. Okay. Yeah. So I am the SEO editor at IGN, and basically that that encompasses a lot of like teaching and editing for SEO and things like that. And I kind of got into that very naturally because I started my career writing guides. I'll get into that more once we start touring the island, mm -hmm. but that kind of translated over to like what I do now, which is like looking at content, optimizing it so that we'll get seen more or picked up more um, and rank on search engines and things like that um and yeah so th that's pretty much what my job summary is um it sounds boring but it's not it's very fulfilling to me because i'm the type of person that i kind of like uh to place a support role that's always been the kind of person that i am um i've always T like kind of shied away from being front and center of anything uh, and I just really like to be there to help people and like put their work in in front of everyone so that's kind of like what an SEO editor's role is right it's like I'm helping your work to get like discovered by more people essentially oh I love that and with the amount yeah. of stuff that IGN's putting out like you're the backbone of most of it it seems like so that's really yeah impressive. Yeah, um, I, I try to like provide information for everyone. Okay, everyone's here. Right, Hi. and you absolutely do. Like, you're so helpful. I think everyone, of course, on the stream is so incredibly helpful and so grateful to have everybody. But yeah, SEO editor well, is so important. Yeah, I've reached yeah. out to Felicia so many times. <laughs> like, can you please look at this page and make it so people will see the page one day? <laughs> um, yeah. Which has also just been really cool. Like talking to Felicia and then relaying that to my freelancers, like having them get that benefit too, like is something I really appreciate. Yeah. So, okay, this is like the entrance. Um, it's very Halloweenified. I basically Halloweenified the heck out of my island because I love Halloween. It's my favorite kind of year. Um, I have the little Puerto Rican flag in the back. So I love cool. that. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Puerto Rico. Um, and I have Black Lives Matter and some LGBTQIA representation here. Love that. And, and sexual, you know, I have to shout out my, my community. Um, oh yeah. 
So yeah, we'll, we'll start over here. So this is like, you know, like Janet said, very suburban energy here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I try to spice it up with like some plants and things like that. And I guess like one thing I was struggling with was like how I'm going to um, really show off my heritage. And I realized like a lot of the things that I love come from just like, you know, the things I got like passed down to me from my grandparents and my mom, like my mom loves to garden. She loves like, you know, planting fruits and veggies and my grandma was very much the same. Um, so that kind of shows through on this island. Here's my little pumpkin patch. So I'll get, yeah, so I'll get started on like how I started writing about games. Um, so there was like, I always loved playing games. Like since I was a very small child, like that was just part of my family. We, that's how we bonded. Every time there was a family get together, there was one kid who had like the Nintendo or, <laughs> you know, something in their room and all of us would congregate there, me and my cousins, and we would just play fighting games and like all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and that translated into later on in life, me being like, you know what? I want to write about games because I love games. So uh, I remember going on Craigslist and I found an opportunity and the opportunity was to go to PAX East and provide coverage and I applied to it and the owner got back to me. It was a very small site. Um, oh, Craigslist of all places, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, and basically the site had just been launched. Like I guess the person had an Instagram that was very popular but he wanted to do a site to uh, accompany it and basically I was like you know what I'll do it and it was a lot because they needed a style guide they we needed to get some writers on board the whole nine um and I just did it I was like I'll do it like I don't mind doing that I want to do it and yeah that's how that whole thing took off it was okay I'm gonna tell you guys the name but it's don't laugh <laughs> okay oh my god it, <laughs> it's called wtfgamersonly.com <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's okay, you can laugh. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I hope they're doing well. Yeah, so um, I think they stopped at, for a little bit. I, I think they're relaunching soon, but um, basically, I'll take you guys over here. Um, Wait, which one are you? Blue hair? <laughs> oh, uh, the girl with the gray hair over here. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, different like really creative names that you'll find out there from a variety of gaming sites it's just kind of fun to see what people come up with yeah Thanks. and um so i started there and that was kind of like a very formative moment for me because i didn't go to college for writing or communications or english or anything like that I oh my god i love this area it's so cute <laughs> yeah behind the bar. yeah <laughs> it's over here the entrance is over here um yeah, I didn't go to school for any of that stuff. I went to school for programming. Um, oh, wow. And, yeah, but like writing has always been something I really love to do. And I basically just like studied, you know, you know, press news writing practices and how to put together a style guide and all that stuff. And I did that for that site. And I, um, you know, reached out to some writers who wanted to contribute and basically tried my best to like start a little site. Um, and that was like a little family for me. Like we all, I think we were all just like lost souls looking for community and we kind of found it in that website. There was a lot of LGBTQ people there. There was, it was a very diverse site too. Um, and we have all like stayed friends. And actually a lot of them have gone on to like do things like Grayson Morales was somebody who wrote for that site and he's at Infinite. There was Jarrell Levi, he's at HP Critical, he launched his own site. Maggie Zakakula, she's in game development now. Um, my friend Christian Cole is like a professional dungeon master. So- Oh, wow. Yeah, like everyone went on to do such awesome stuff. Um, I could stay at this bar all day though. It's yeah, so good. Oh, so <laughs> this is like <laughs> such a good place to be. Yeah. Oh, we need a ladder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, this place is cute. Cute. I have one of these bookshelves for so long. I can craft these. This stuff. is such I a quaint you. little like cottage <laughs> area. I love it. I know. I'm, I'm definitely one of those people who watches those cottage or like Animal Crossing videos. Like, oh yeah. I just started doing that. Like it's so a relaxing, but also very inspiring. Yes. 
Um, I got a lot of my ideas from there. So from WTF Gamers, I started, uh, I went back to school because I like stopped school for a while. I went back to school, I moved back home to kind of get my life together. Um, and while I was doing that, I started podcasting and streaming because writing just wasn't, I didn't have enough time to write. Um, and it, that was like the most viable thing for me. So I started, you know, podcasting and streaming on the side. And that's kind of how I learned to do that. And I think after two-ish years, oh, I didn't mention this. It's kind of important, but I met my boyfriend at WTF Gamers Only. Oh, um, that's cute. Yeah. So we were together for two years. And then I finally um, was like, you know what? I think I'm going to move in with you. Like, we're going to move in together. And oh, snap. Yeah, I moved to New Jersey, where I am now. Okay, I guess my life is over, we can just sit and chat. Okay. <laughs> um, I moved to New Jersey, and that's we, we moved in together, and that's when I landed my next job, which was uh, as con- a contractor for um, Greenlight Content. So Greenlight Content, basically, they do a variety of content for different people, so I ended up writing for a bunch of places that I never thought in my entire life I would be able to write for, like Prima Games, Tetris, HTC Vive, Turtle Beach. Um, that's kind of like where I really got like my solid background in writing. Um, and also the thing that I loved the most was probably the smallest thing, which was Indie Obscura, which is a site that is primarily dedicated to in- covering indie games. And um, it was me and Morgan Shaver. Um, she's, I think she's the EIC of Prima Games now, actually. Um, and we just were running this little tiny site writing about indie games. And that's kind of where I learned that SEO is super important because it was so small and indie games doesn't really bring in the, the, the page clicks like, you know, mainstream video game content does. So Mm -hmm. we started writing guides about indie games and that's how we were able to build an audience on indie obscura um unfortunately indie obscura didn't last i think it's online now but it did go offline for a little bit but um that's kind of where i learned all my seo stuff and um really realized like how important that was for like getting more people onto your website Indie Obscura, yes, I also met Joe Torado there. Shout out to Stay Mighty in the chat right now. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I met him there. I met Andrew Zakowski. Like, those are all people that uh, I can't thank them enough. They taught me so much when I was there. Um, So after that, I started freelancing. And so that's how I got into in touch with Miranda, actually. Uh, I think after... I want to say six months of freelancing. IG, I like pitched myself at IGN. I was like, hey, like I would love to write for you guys. Um, and Miranda and Sam got back to me and they were like, well, like what kind of games do you like to write? Da, 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 da. And I, I think my first guide was for Oxygen Not Included. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then from that point on, like, I was writing guides for IGN. Like it, they provided me with really consistent work, which I'm. Just, I was so grateful for. When you're a freelancer yes. and you get you get some consistent work, you're like, yes, thank you. Like I can count on you to like at least give me that much money a month. Um, and yeah, but you know, freelancing was a super hard time. Um, I think most freelancers know, like it's it's a struggle. <laughs> Um, but I really found my voice and I really like developed as a writer during that time. And I think after a year and a half of freelancing and working part-time jobs, I was like a barista for a while. I was a, I worked at a yoga studio for a while. I helped people with their websites because I was doing web design for a little bit. Um, I got a call back with my first full-time job at Digital Trends, um, that was my first full-time gig as a, a writer and that was for the gaming editor gaming section editor and then from there i you know i moved to ibm and that's where i am now yay yay 
Well, let me tell you, when when you got the job at IGN, or I, I guess when I first, like, because I'm sure you're freelancing with a guys team. Uh, sorry if you can hear my cat in the background, by the way. He's very loud. Um, but uh, when, when, when you're introduced as a full-time boy, I was just like, yes, another Latinx person at IGN. This is amazing. And lo and behold, you are an incredible coworker. So really appreciate you here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I was super excited because, like, I knew that IGN had so many Latinx workers there. And I was just like, hell yeah. Like I knew of Miranda. I have I saw Janet too. Like I was just so so stoked. I was like, yes, like diversity. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. I think oh, okay, should I do everyone else? I think yeah, you can just hit the minus. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll just okay. like fly back to our islands magically. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I'll head to the airport and set up the um code and everything. Yeah, I'll um I'll, I think I'm just going to have it open so you guys don't have to type in a code. Okay, for it. anyone watching and if you're friends with Miranda, please don't visit the island. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only person who's friends with me who's watching is Sarah. Okay, don't cool. you dare visit Sarah. <laughs> this is my I can't <laughs> Hi Sarah. Can't have, well, what's up? No, just kidding Sarah. Okay, but honestly, also thanks for watching friend, Sarah. Yeah, as if Sarah jumped in, she's just my twin. I would actually be really delighted, but also, after this. <laughs> 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 no, she wouldn't, she wouldn't do that. Um, but yeah, I'm actually really excited to show you guys my island. But so we, so we can kind of keep the ball rolling. I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about my time, even though we haven't got to my island yet. No, that's fine, yeah. Um, so I started also as a freelancer, which is hence the name from like freelance to full time. Um, and, and that's kind of, I think, pro resonates with a lot of us of just doing a lot of other things. Oh, I'm Jose Otero with the $100 oh. donation Jose. via Tilt to Fly. What's Jose. good? Oh, my What's God. Up? For those unaware, Jose Otero is IGN alum, um, now working and doing great things at Nintendo. Thank you so much, Jose. Oh, my God. We, we miss you so yeah. much. Wouldn't it be uh, funny but... if it's just someone named Jose Otero? But <laughs> even if you're not the Jose Otero, you are a Jose Otero. We yeah, either way, thanks for the hundred dollars. <laughs> Hell yeah! Thank you so much. It's so so kind. Um, also, in chat, there's a lot of love for um, all of our outfits, but especially Armando's. Um, yes. Like his, um, what is it? Fernando Vincente, right? The <laughs> wrestler. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. That one and uh, Gandalf the Gay. That was like also a popular one. Um, oh, thanks, so, so good. also uh, worth noting, like on um, Felicia's Island, like Hyrule Shieldman mentioned, like hearing the music makes made them feel like they're at home, and I thought that was really sweet. Aww. Yeah, I I, I I literally did that like right before the stream put the little salsa music on in the PR flag, and I like got emotional. I was like, "Girl, get it together." <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, suddenly I'm like regretting leaving it open because people I know who are not watching this just got on Animal Crossing. I'm like, don't, don't come. But it's okay. Don't we'll, come. We'll, we can take the. What, what's the. Well, you can phrase? close the gate, yeah, when we get there. Yeah, no, I think I think we'll be fine. Oh, that's true. Okay, who's going there first? Janet, I see you already. I think I'm. Uh, I'll probably might be the first one there. Okay. I'm doing the search for yeah. a friend. Let's see. I'm very excited to have you guys. Oh, Miranda, yeah. are you Twin I'm Peaks? I'm so excited. Yes, I am Twin Peaks. Okay, cool. Oh, great. I'm very excited for you guys to come to my Twin Peaks themed island. I'm doing my best to recreate Twin Peaks Animal Crossing. It's is there coffee and pie everywhere? Uh, there is definitely coffee. Uh, no pie. <laughs> not, not pie yet. Not yet. I'm just kidding, still, I'm just still working on it, I promise. <laughs> but yeah, so I began my journey back in fifth grade. Um, Hell yeah. Which is, yeah, so in fifth grade, I knew that I wanted to write about video games. Uh, I, I really loved reading and I loved writing and I loved video games and I was like, man, I can't make a living off writing books. So I'm gonna go write about video games, which is, you know, <laughs> it's not like you're like making a ton, but I felt like it was probably a, a better goal, like to go into journalism rather than trying to be an author. So <laughs> um, that's what my little kid brain told me anyway. And I'm very glad it did because uh, after that, I just pretty much did every opportunity I could to get into journalism classes or journalism clubs or yearbook and just every single opportunity to write because I really did genuinely love writing and of course video games. So um, a lot of my journey was like again going to different and just trying my best to be involved. Um, but what really I think kind of kicked off my career was aside from obviously playing a ton of games all my life 
was kind of starting my own blog. And so a lot of people say these days, like, don't work for free. Don't don't do these things. But I think it is really important to have a place to practice. Um, and mm-hmm. I think if you're working for yourself and kind of putting yourself out there and like mm-hmm. your free time and like learning your learning your way, there's like no shame in that. And I think it's it's really good to kind of have that sort of first steps, right? So I, that was actually called Brandon Pavic Blog. And so I had um, one of my old friends who actually was at, with me at Beyond 300. Um, we started that blog together. And so that was something that we, we kind of did through college. And it was really cool because we had our own pod and we really did our best to kind of like make a name for ourselves and get some experience just editing each other's work before we actually started pitching people for money. Um, So I did go to school for journalism and that was a a lot because I really just tried to graduate as fast as I could. (laughs) (laughs) I, uh, (laughs) yeah, so I I worked really hard to try to do part-time jobs and I did like our school yearbook slash new like magazine like we had an online magazine so i kind of uh, applied to be the editor-in-chief of that and so i ran our online publication and which was nice because they paid you for it but that also meant it was a lot more work so i was doing that and also working a part-time job at a cafe and then i spent my summers um doing some some work or yeah some work at a spa that was like owned by some friends that we kind of knew after have gone having gone there for a while uh, we got to know them pretty well, and they're just like, do you, do you, "Would you like to come like work over your, your summers?" I was like, "Yes, please. <laughs> I need to save money." <laughs> and so, um, so I did that and like ran my blog, my downtime, and then at Beyond Three Hundred, that was kind of a really big turning point for me. So prior to that, the only other gaming like event with other games people that weren't just like family or close friends was like this GameStop event in San Antonio and I saved so much money and I had a panic attack because I was so scared because the Game Informer guys were there they had a booth because it was a GameStop event and um, I was so excited to be there and I I almost passed out because I had a panic attack about leaving them because I was so nervous yeah like I've been working all my life to like you know get here mm-hmm. and then i was just like oh my god my first chance to meet somebody in the gaming industry uh, thankfully it went okay i gave them actually a business card i had for the ran- random havoc blog that we had um and it was really cool getting to meet them and that kind of gave me my first interaction with games media people before going to ign for beyond 300 and that's where i met um, a lot of our former colleagues like Mitch and Andrew and Brian Tano, who was actually still at IGN, um, and at Greg, I met so many wonderful people. And I like knew after meeting them that I really did want to work for IGN. And, and so I put everything I could into getting there. Um, and the door really opened for me when I finally got freelance. I had been freelancing for other smaller sites prior to that, just here and there. Um, and then, but it wasn't until I got to start working for the news team that I really got into Finland with IGN. And so some, every now and then we'll have um, these sort of like call outs for freelancers. So if you guys are at all interested in freelancing for IGN and if you, you know, have a little bit of writing experience, um, definitely look out for those because that's one where I got to apply and I kind of, they gave us three prompts to write news for. And then um, from there, they contact people and they contacted me and I was so excited and so nervous again. (laughs) Um, And I was so happy to work with some really great editors. Um, One thing that, you know, as a manager now, and and since I do actually get to hire people and like get to find freelancers, also everybody, welcome to my island. Thank you. Uh, uh, If you guys can tell really quickly breaking the story, this is the bird that shows at the very beginning of Twin Peaks and Callie (laughs) showed this to me. She's like, someone made the bird from Twin Peaks. So I figured, like, getting started at the island, it only made sense to have that. And then, like, I can hear my... the music right now. Yeah. <laughs> and then here's my little rose, my gold rose garden that I'm working on. Yeah, little pumpkins. Uh, this is my, pre- my little house, which I put by this little beach. Um, but yeah, so I just really tried my best to do what I could. Um, and so we'll continue my origin story in a second. But if you guys will follow me, please. I'll see this little orchard in my rock garden. Yes, I'm ma'am. In rock garden. Oh, okay. Congratulations on rock garden. That that's Thank no you. simple feat. That's, yeah, that's a feat for sure. Oh, this is so hard. Uh, but we're actually <laughs> to come to this side of the island, which is I kind of have the houses spread out, just kind of everywhere, haphazardly. This is kind of where I first built these, and I left them there. That was nice. it. Um, 
But uh, yeah, my messy beach. Oh, my bottle. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so don't trust us, I see. That's fine. <laughs> no, I forgot to. I have, I have space. I, I, I left my bottle on the ground. Yeah, but like, it's, like, it's all good. My bottle. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as we walk up this beach, I'm gonna show you guys a really cool area um, that I'm really proud of. That really nails part of the Twin Peaks theme. So I, I do want to show you guys those because it's very important. So this is my Black Lodge, which uh, is actually Lucky's house, who is cute. a like mummy puppy. And then uh, here is the actual interior of the Black Lodge. So Yo, amazing. Yeah, so I, I thought like having it out of the way and kind of in a weird corner would be good. There's also spooky music here too. Oh, um, that's awesome. So if you Ooh, I do hear it now. I'll continue my story. Yeah. So, uh, so I worked really hard to get a lot of freelance. Uh, my first freelance for Dan Stapleton, I had another panic attack. Actually, it's like my, I guess that was my second. I completely forgot about the GameStop panic attack. Anyway, I'm sorry to recount all the panic attacks I've had. <laughs> but you know, it's really stressful, right? Like, this was my dream job. And, like, I knew I wanted to do this for so long. And I was so worried about messing up. Or, if, like, what if people didn't like me? So I was just like, oh, i got to do my best. And so I got back the, the reddest paper I've ever had in my entire life. Um, oh my gosh. It was so marked up. And I was like, oh my god, they hate me. They're never going to give me a review again. And uh, thankfully, they did. <laughs> so, nice. um, yeah, so that worked out pretty well. I think if you guys just kind of... Aries, thank you so much for your donation of $25. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Um, but uh, just kind of as a reminder that if you guys are also kind of getting started, if you guys get a really red piece back, that's okay. That means that someone really took a look at your piece and wants to make it better for you and help you. And as long as you're learning from your edits, then it's all good. Let's continue on, my friends. And I think that's such a big thing too, is like learning. Because one thing I guess that I was so surprised by whenever I was kind of getting into this industry, no one taught me about freelance. Like I went to school for journalism. They didn't say crap about freelance. They're like, hey, get an internship. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and they're like, okay, go get a job. It's like, that's not how this works. <laughs> uh, so this is the Great Northern. So I could only, I, I made it kind of small, but it has one, this is Poop's room. This has like a little suitcase, his, his pants. And so I thought this was going to be like a nice, this is like the little little kitchen they go to. So I tried to make a little. That's little damn good coffee. Room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I do have coffee everywhere. <laughs> Um, we'll come down here because there's not too much along the back side of the island. I purposely left it pretty wooded just because I felt like, obviously, Twin Peaks, there's a lot of wood, it's trees, it's set in, in Washington State, so, um, I did Wait, are we it. starting a band? Yes. Okay. That's what I have over here, and I love it. I'm so <laughs> happy. Um, so, I, uh, so yeah, I, I just kind of did my best to, like, figure out freelancing, and, and it really helped me to figure out that it's not, uh, DJ Red, I'm sorry. So my reddest paper came from having her so great. Yeah, but I, I really do think that it's such a nice thing to get something back because that means someone really cares about helping you do better, be a better writer. And it, as long as, again, you, read, you learn from it and ask questions where you need to, and those will be good. Uh, thank you guys for this wonderful music. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, so after kind of doing a lot of freelance work, eventually um, Dan recommended me to Sam. So Sam Claiborne used to lead bookies before me, and he was kind enough to let me come this way now, um, to say, "Hey, like you should do guides work." And I said, "I've never done a guide." He said, "Don't worry, it's easy." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> It's not, it's not that easy. Like, you can learn it, but it is a lot of work. Um, uh, fun fact about my island, this Stonehenge was the first major piece of decoration I ever put down, so it, oh, it could nice. never move. It's been at this spot minutes. forever. <laughs> um, just really quickly, so I'm going to lead you guys actually to my garden, just down this way, because we're, we're getting close on time. So, um, eventually, I just kept working. I worked really hard to be able to graduate a little bit early, and I love this little arcade that I made. Like I, I designed book four. Um, I like this little park that too. Oh, uh, little um, You know, Marshall about to get messed up right now. You know, walk <laughs> out the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so, um, I'll come over here. Where's, like, the final spot? We didn't get to go up. That's okay. Um, and so, I really tried my best to, like, graduate early, and I, I got to graduate half a year early because I took, like, summer classes. This is my little monkey patch. It's in progress. And, um, 
And, and so it was really important to me to make that all happen. And then Sam and just said, hey, we have a job opening up that's like half editorial, half guides. And she's like, really? And so <laughs> I applied and it just so happened that weekend that I had just turned 21 not too long ago. And I was gonna treat myself to my birthday to go to San Francisco to go celebrate with some of my friends from my gym. Um, and I was like, hey, by the way, um, I'm actually on my way to San Francisco if you wanna do an interview. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and that worked out. It's so, it was okay. so perfect. I I could not believe the luck on that part. Um, so I did my first interview with our then editor in chief at the time and Sam. And then I was really grateful that they called me back. And then eventually when I was in a class for school, I got a call from Sam. Good job. And I cried. And then I went to my class and I'm like, Marina, what was that? And I was like, I just got a job. And I'm like, yeah. It's like, oh my gosh. That's so crazy. Yeah. I can only imagine how you felt. Like, that's wild yeah and then since then i've just been working really hard at IGN. i've been there for almost six years and i've worked my way from being a freelancer and now i'm an executive editor and i leave like guides and it's kind of mm. crazy we and love I'm, growth yeah we love just see it <laughs> <laughs> thank you um so yeah it's just been a very long road and i think at this point in my career now the biggest thing is i want to try to do especially with Latinx and games and, and everybody. I like to try to be as much of a mentor as I can and try to help people find opportunities because I know it's really difficult to figure out in the freelance. And I know such a big thing for me was having mentors to say, you should be doing this or you shouldn't be doing this. And that that really went a long way. So I like to try to pass along as much as I can. And of course, do my best to make sure that representation and diversity and equity is such a big thing within our company, especially since I have been to it. So. Uh, that's, that's what I did. Uh, so, uh, I'm also do we have enough time to go to my place? Because I feel like we have I like about like five minutes left. I um, think we can. Think we have a little bit more. In. Yeah. I think we have a little bit more because we started late. Yeah, and then everything uh, froze. So gotcha, we have. Gotcha. A, I think we have enough time to check yours out. Okay, I can talk can while we it? while we set that up too. Yeah, yeah. For sure. yeah. Cool. So uh, again, my name is Armando. Um, and while my uh, background isn't as video game intensive as my peers here, um, obviously grew up playing video games my entire life. I was very much a closeted little gay boy in a very traditional Catholic Mexican family. So video games were my like go-to to escape, obviously. But um, I grew up in San Jose, California, went to school at UC Santa Cruz for film and digital media and was a, a video editor uh, and camera operator by trade. Um, and so following my graduation in 2013, I started freelance video editing a lot. And I, I know a lot of my friends who I had graduated with um, flew down to LA to you know, seek that um, Hollywood dream. But I had, I had a lot of issues with ho the Hollywood um, mm -hmm. framework and just didn't really want to move to LA, no offense, Janet. Um, <laughs> but, I'm right uh, there with you, I yeah. can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Janet, if you, if you want to be the only one to come to the island, that, that works out. Um, let me let me open let me open my gate real quick. But um, so yeah, I decided to stay in the Bay because I have a, nothing but love for the Bay Area, despite its problems. Like, I don't see myself living anywhere else, and although I could see myself living anywhere else, anywhere else realistically, like this is where I want to be, you know. Um, but oops, oh no, I gotta start this over. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I stayed in the Bay and was working as a freelance video editor, and while here I worked on a bunch of um, like Kickstarter videos for companies, for startups who needed video work, for um, a couple of production houses who did like commercials for like big brands and stuff. Um, uh, sorry, one second, let me figure this out. Um, okay, I'm connecting to the internet. And yeah, it was, it was really fun. Freelancing is probably an experience that I'll cherish forever just because you know, you're know you making your own hours, working your own hours, taking your own time off, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, you're like, you you get a gig and already the next day you're already looking for the for the next one to follow that. Cause like, you know, you gotta get paid somehow. And it got to a point where I was getting kind of stressed out just because of, you know, the uncertainty of knowing whether or not I'm gonna have a gig in the future. So there's like a lot of, you know, insecurities there. And so I, started looking for a full-time job. And so, um, okay, uh, it should be open for my gate. Is it just friends? Now. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, so yeah, I started looking for a full-time job and actually came across a job at IGN in 2015 <laughs> as a video editor. And so I applied, uh, funnily enough, did not get it. 
But the HR person at the time told me that because of my background, because uh, in previous gigs, I managed a couple of companies like YouTube channels and was very familiar with SEO and stuff. And uh, they recommended that I apply for this syndication role. And I was like, okay, cool. So I interviewed and I got it. And five years later, still on that team. And it's been really cool. I've never had a job where I've A, gotten along and respect all my coworkers because we have so much talent and so much diversity at IGN, whether it's like, you know, ethnic backgrounds or just like backgrounds of education, backgrounds and skills, et cetera. Like it's such a cool place to work. And um, I really miss everybody because <laughs> I haven't seen everybody since like March or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I miss y'all too. But, um, but yeah, so here I am five years later, uh, now syndication and digital strategist. And what I do here is I, uh, essentially manage and curate our YouTube channels, of which IGN has a few. Uh, but, you know, that includes, you know, putting videos up at certain times, deciding what goes where, um, analytics, statistics, and stuff like that to report back to the team at large. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's um, really, really thankful to A, be working, but also B, be working at a company and an industry that I've grown up with over like my entire life. And I'm 29 years old, so that's a, that's a long time. Um, so yeah, that's basically my story. Um, wait, Jenna, are you outside now? Okay, I I'm am. still in the airport. Okay, so I know we don't have that much time, but I do have two things that I wanna show you all as well as the audience. And first, so welcome to Delfino. So the first thing I wanna show you is, follow me this way. The frog got in my way. <laughs> uh, leave Tattle <laughs> Now I'm watching on stream and I'm just like, whoa, so cool. <laughs> Oh wait, how do I get here? Oh, this way. Wait, hold on. How do I get there? Oh yeah, I made it so that it's like this like back alleyway that you have to access it. But in honor of Dia de los Muertos, I made a little altar. And I think Janet, you might have seen it on Twitter, but here it is. This is really oh nice. My God. Oh my yeah. God. Oh my goodness. I made it um, with my abuelita in mind, and of course my tios who have also passed away. Um, they're ba my grandma was basically the glue of our family, so um, it's been like ooh, almost 10 years since she passed away, which is crazy to think about. But yeah, this is uh, really cool. I used some uh, uh, custom content for the simple panels back there, but yeah, I like the way it turned out. And then I want to show off my pumpkin patch because I put way too much time to not show Oh yeah, it, I'm so, so excited. You've been hyping this pumpkin patch for like the last hour. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where am I? Okay, cool. That's Pango. Say hi. Uh, okay, and here's the gateway, and then here's my patch. Ta-da! It did not disappoint. It did not disappoint. <laughs> I love the shovel. The, the shovel's such a cute use of like, the That's decor. Cute. Yeah, I'm all about the little details, you know. The water so, can like, too is good. Yeah, the I, I dig it. But yeah, that's that. Uh, thank you for coming to my island. And like, I, I feel free to like explore too if you want to stay on after our segment. But yeah, thanks guys for you know listening to my story uh despite how small how short it was but <laughs> <laughs> that is so incredible um and yeah you do such important work on our team like honestly i'm amazed by how much you guys do and you guys are so analytical about our youtube as well and you uh, we would not succeed without you in my thanks we really wouldn't um well, one it's, very last it's thing that I'd like What's to hear up? from you, Armando, before we close out, is just uh, how did you, I, I get the video element because it's just kind of like learning about video, but how did you learn how to like manage channels? Like how did you learn the things you need to know to be in syndication? Oh, a lot of uh, research and blogs of like, because back in the day, like uh, over five years ago, I guess, I don't know if you could call that back in the day, there's just like so many blogs of like startup help, you know, startup self-help blogs that, you know, help you market, monetize, advertise your YouTube channel so that you grow and, and stuff like that. So a lot of it was intensive reading and a lot of it was just trial and error, you know, like uh, a couple of gigs that I had where they were having me make uh, in like internal um, in in instruction videos for their team. They would have me produce that and then also like put them on YouTube and then they're like, they would, you know, uh, task me with making that public and like you know doing what I can to make those get views and while like they're very niche topics you know it was an uh, exercise in learning like how exactly to market on YouTube because YouTube YouTube is did I say YouTube I might have said YouTube on YouTube is an ever-evolving beast and so you always have to keep up with the latest changes and updates and stuff and so it's it's all it's you're all you're always learning or at least I'm always learning um, but yeah 
Well, thanks to everyone for taking the time to hang out and see everyone's islands and hear more about what all of you guys do, because that's really cool. Um, just to end, I guess, too, we can just remind people what our handles are, where to follow us. Uh, again, I'm Jay Garcia, and my handle's at GameOnesis on all social media. Uh, my name's Felicia, and my handle is Fel at Felicia Vagabond on basically everything. My name's at Miranda, and that's at Havoc Rose, and that's Havoc with a K. Mom, everything as well. Yeah, and I'm Armando, and on Twitter and Instagram, I am at underscore Mando Torres, double R, E, S. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.